Okay, this is part three of a four-part video series on FastCase. In this video, we're going to explore the FastCase results page. This is the main FastCase page, and you can see our last ten searches. And I'm going to make it easy on myself and just select the most recent search that we ran in uh, video two, so I don't have to uh, retype it. And this is a typical FastCase results page with the hits ranked according to relevance. And you can see the relevance scores are on the left-hand side of the page. However, you're not stuck with just going by relevance, you can reorder the cases uh, uh, by alphabetically by case name, you can reorder them according to decision date, and you can even reorder them according to the number of times they've been cited within our thousand results or in, in the entire fast case database. So there are sorting options on the results page and they are very useful. But as I said before, FastCase defaults to the relevance score for the default results page. You can see there, there they are, the scores on the left-hand side. It's very easy, though, to reorder. All you need to do is go um, to the column heading that you're interested in, click on it, and it will, it will reorder according to those um, the, that heading. So, for example, if we wanted to reorder according to the number of times the case has been cited in our entire thousand hits, just click on that heading and there you go. And you can see California v. Greenwood in this case has been cited almost one out of four times, 248 out of a thousand. So that's an interesting case for us because it's been cited a lot. However, it didn't rank in the one, two, or three hits. So let me go back and, and start again and show you what you can actually do with this page other than rejiggering the results. The first hit here, 100% relevant, USV Redmond. I'm going to add this to my print queue by clicking on that little icon that does indicate that it's a printer, believe it or not. Now the second one at 97% is also pretty, pretty relevant, so I'm going to click that one as well, add that to the queue. The other ones on the page are not quite as relevant, they're at 70% or less, and I'm going to ignore them for now. Now I've got two documents in my print queue, but I can add a third by going and resorting again by the number of times they've been cited within the results and, and selecting California v. Greenwood because that one has a lot of citations. So now I have three documents. So I go up to the top and I click on Print Save Documents in Queue, and now I can actually download the three documents that I've selected. My choices are Microsoft Word format, uh, Adobe Acrobat PDF, and Enrich Text format. Rich Text format is a very useful uh, format to use if you want to edit the document, but maybe your text editor doesn't support Microsoft Word documents, or you're switching between, say, a Mac uh, and Windows uh, machines at work, at home, whatever. It, this is a sort of generic format. It's much easier to use, and uh, that's, that, that's a great choice. I'm going to select Adobe Acrobat PDF because I don't want to edit these documents. I just want to read them. Click the Print Save button. A new window pops up. My browser says, Document's ready. And all I need to do is click on the button and I can open the document. Here it is in my Adobe Reader and you can see it's nicely formatted, two columns, uh, fast cases added a header and a footer. It's a nice format to read and to print out if I, if I so chose. Okay, there's other options that you can do, other choices that you can employ on this page. If we go up to the results uh, um, menu choice up at the top there, I can switch between the first paragraph and the most relevant paragraph. If you look at the four lines of descri description under the case name, call that like a snippet. And that's what you know you see on a Google results page. I can switch back and forth between the first paragraph and the most relevant paragraph to get a better view of whether this case is of interest to me, it's on point, and do I want to add it to the queue and so forth. Okay, now here's the, the elephant in the room. It's been sitting right in front of the page uh, all video, and I've kind of ignored it, the Foresight uh, option there. Foresight is something that FastCase does. They identify cases that don't necessarily have our search terms in them, but are cited fairly frequently both within the database and within our search results. You can see this first one here has been cited 55 times within our results. And that actually, and that's Cats v. United States, that's actually more times than our second hit there has been cited within the thousand results. So this case may be of interest to me, and if I want, I can click on the printer queue, uh, printer icon and add it to our print queue, uh, or I can even expand it by clicking on the plus sign on the left-hand side and, and view its snippet to see if this case really is of interest to me or not. Now, if I, if I don't like those, these cases, and I don't even like the whole concept of foresight, there you go, I'm going to open that up, you can read the snippet. If I don't like the concept of foresight, I, I can ignore it. I mean, I don't even have to click on the arrow to open up the, the cases, and if I do open them up, I can just click the arrow and, 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 and compress it. I can ignore it. They won't go away, but at least I can ignore them. 
but it is a nice additional feature. Here's another feature that's of, u of interest. It's the interactive timeline. The interactive timeline, this tab is, is easily missed, but it is a very a very interesting feature. You've got to get your head around it once you use it, but it is very interesting. Right now, it's rather intimidating because we're looking at the first 500 hits, and it, it looks like a jumble. But if you go down and, and limit to, say, only the top 50 hits, it, it, it opens up a lot more, and you get an idea of what, what's being presented. The y-axis shows us the, the relevance score. The higher on the y-axis you are, the more relevant you are. The, the size of the, uh, the, the circle, and I'm going to call them uh, deviled egg, uh, it indicates the number of times it's been cited both within the database and within the uh, search results. You can see California v. Greenwood is the one that I was hovering over there just a, a minute ago. On the, the axis on the x-axis uh, will allow you to uh, look at more recent cases. And you can see I just hovered over US v. Redmond, which is more recent and also uh, very relevant at 100%. That was our 100% uh, record there. And incidentally, any of these circles, if you click on them, you'll be able to open up the actual case itself. But right now, I'm just going to mouse over them to show that it gives you details, including the number of times it's been cited. So the devil egg, the size of the devil egg is the third axis, if you will. We've got relevance, we've got year. The size of the devil egg indicates the number of times it's been cited in the entire database and the number of times it's been cited within our search results. This is a nice feature. If you can get your head around it, it can help you identify relevant cases fairly quickly. And this is a quick review of the FastCase results page.